What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel where we discuss everything related to tech, where we discuss everything related to gaming. And in today's video, I want to show you guys my final result for my gaming build on a 106 inch screen. So I needed to collect all these equipment, all these uh, all these products over the next uh, over the last couple months. Sorry, uh, obviously you guys can see that there's a PS5, there's a PlayStation VR aim controller, there's also an Xbox Series S. We also have a PlayStation VR. We also have an Xbox Series X, a Nintendo Wii U, which I think is probably the most underrated console, and we also have a PlayStation 4 Pro. So I've been working on this video for a couple months. And again, I just want to show you guys the final result uh, of my epic gaming build on a 106 inch projector screen. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what I'm using is a Grand View large flat series screen. This is a 106 inch diagonal screen. And obviously you guys can see that it has a white background with black borders. Now the advantage of having black borders is that it's pretty difficult to perfectly align your projector. So having black borders makes it that if you have some light bleed, it's going to be harder to detect and harder to see. Now the way this projector was installed is that you guys can see that there is an aluminum plate that runs from left to right. And then there's these two red studs that screw into the wall. And this is what is supporting that 106 inch projector screen. So when it comes to sizing and figuring out how big your projector screen should be, I'd highly recommend for you to contact local professionals who work in the audio visual department. They will be able to see based on how far you're sitting, how big your projector screen should be and advise you as well on which projector you should be using. Now, when it comes to selecting a projector, there's a couple things you're going to have to consider. Things such as what type of resolution you're looking for, or how bright do you want your projector to be, or what type of inputs and outputs do you need. And the brightness is probably one of the biggest factors because depending on your type of ambient lighting environment, that's going to highly affect what type of image quality you're going to get. Now, when it comes to lighting environment, a couple things you have to look at is, first of all, how many windows do you have in your setup? You guys have to understand that projectors are highly, highly affected by ambient light. And typically what happens is if there's a lot of ambient light, you get grayed out images. So some things to consider is how many windows are in your setup? If you have a lot of windows letting in a lot of sunlight, typically you'd want to put some blinds or you'd want to put some curtains. And typically you'd want to use something called blackout curtains to make sure you get the darkest environment possible. In this specific environment, I got both my windows open and I have the lights on as well. So right over the projector, I got six spotlights as well as two other spotlights to the left of it. Typically, this would be the worst case scenario in terms of external lighting, as like I said, all my windows are open and all my lights are on. When it comes to the AV furniture console, you guys can see I'm using something relatively basic. This is just an IKEA shelf, 
so it's super inexpensive i'd recommend as well guys you know put your money towards the electronics and the av stuff this ikea shelf is perfectly functional and has all the space that i needed to fit all my consoles and remotes and controllers So you guys will realize inside my gaming furniture is that I have multiple consoles. I got a PS4 Pro, I got an Xbox Series S, there's a Nintendo Wii U, I have a PS5 and a laptop. So that makes up to five HDMI sources, right? So there's five HDMI outputs. So how do I connect that to my projector? So what I am currently using is a HDMI switch. So I have a HDMI switch with five inputs and one output. So the one output going to my projector and then the five inputs are from all those five different HDMI sources. So let's take a look what I actually have inside my gaming furniture. You guys can see there's a PS4 Pro. Standing up is a PS3 Slim. And on the right side is an Xbox Series S. The beautiful thing about the Xbox Series S is that it is just tiny. This is probably the easiest thing to install. And there you have it as well. I also have a PS3 Slim because the PS4 and the PS5 are not backwards compatible. So sitting right on top, I have my Nintendo Wii U gamepad, and I also have three separate Wii U controllers, as well as a Wii remote and a Wii nunchuck. And to the right of that as well, I got the sensor bar for when I wanna use my Wii nunchuck. So that's a beautiful thing about Nintendo is that everything is backwards compatible. So on the right side of my console is where I actually have the system installed. You guys can see there I got the black 32 gigabyte Nintendo Wii U with a stack of games on the right. Some games maybe to mention here are games like Mario Kart 8. Uh, we got Yoshi's Woolly World, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Super Mario 3D World. These are all just fantastic games. As we scroll up, we can see another one. This is Splatoon. And Splatoon was a first IP to come out on the Nintendo Wii U. And we later got a second Splatoon on the Nintendo Switch because of its success. As we scroll up here towards the PS5, you notice that there was those Epson 3D glasses. I'll get a little bit more into detail later, but those are compatible glasses that are used with my projector. So here's the glorious PS5 sitting on top. This was the only way I was actually really able to fit it was sitting upright. And then right next to it, these are some peripherals that I use depending on which console I am playing with. You guys can notice that they are the Move controllers and there are some DualShock 3 controllers as well as the Nunchuck for movement. I use this for VR and I use it as well for my PlayStation 3. You guys remember this console? Yes, the original PlayStation 3, probably the most expensive console to ever come out. Uh, so this was the original one, and I think I must have paid like eight or nine hundred dollars Canadian for it. And sitting on top is the PlayStation VR aim controller. Now we have the headset here. So typically right now, what I'm doing is I'm connecting my PlayStation VR to my PlayStation 5. I could plug it to the PS4 Pro as well, but using the PS5 just works better. So onto the projector. I mean, there are a lot of great projector manufacturers and one that's probably super renowned and known is Epson. So Epson makes some of the best projectors. So this is what I am currently using. So this specific projector also has 3D capabilities. So this projector came with 3D glasses and it's the newer technology of 3D glasses that uses infrared technology. This Epson projector can get pretty bright, rated at 2,300 lumens. If you guys remember at the beginning of my video, we spoke about ambient lighting. So it's very important that your projector is able to get as bright as possible. 
Now you guys can see the actual black mounting bracket that's installed. So this is a swivel, tilt and angle bracket, which is very important when installing projectors. The more flexibility your bracket has, the easier it's going to be to align and set up your projector. So you guys are going to notice that there's a single HDMI source coming out of the projector. And obviously it was installed professionally into the ceiling with a nice finishing. The same thing with a power cord. You guys can see that there was an actual power box installed into the ceiling to really make this job clean and look as professional as possible. This projector also gives you all the typical connections you're going to need. But typically this one has two HDMI inputs which is great. Now on the right side of the projector, you're also going to notice again, the clean setup, the single power cord plugging in for power. And also you're going to notice that on the back side of this projector, there was some built-in speakers. Now don't expect amazing sound, but it does the job for people who don't have a surround system installed. You will also notice on the bottom side, you do have access to buttons for quick setup. So this is the final installation of the projector as a shot from the back projecting Forza Horizon 4 on the Xbox Series X. It looks great, it runs great in 60 frames per second. So let's discuss briefly the sitting layout. I went for some red curtains really to give that old school movie theater feeling and I went also with a six seating position. So two couches with three seaters each to allow for maximum people to be able to relax and sit down and enjoy either watching a movie or playing some games. You'll also notice in the corners, I use some warm colored LED lights just to bring everything together. When it comes to the couch, like you guys shouldn't be spending a lot of money for this. I bought these couches. They're super basic, very comfortable. They recline, which is great. And also I paid maybe three to $400 for these couches. And what's nice is that they have access to a cup holder on the side for a nice little refresher, either a drink or a beer during your gaming sessions, which makes it really, really nice. So again, guys, you shouldn't be spending a fortune for this. Just find something that fits well in your environment, something that meets your decor as well, and that makes it super comfortable for you to enjoy gaming. All right, guys, so let's take a look now at some games running on this Epson projector. We're going to start off with Insomniac Games. This is Miles Morales, obviously Spider-Man, running at 60 frames per second. What an awesome game. So let's take a look. I'll let you guys enjoy some gameplay. So keep in mind here that the room is almost completely dark. There's still some light bleep from the outside, but it's pretty close to almost being completely dark. Now keep in mind, there's always that argument of projectors versus TVs. And for sure, when it comes to resolution, yeah, you're gonna get a much better resolution on a TV. But when it comes to size, I mean, how much would it cost you to install yourself a 106 inch TV? I mean, those are like 50, $60,000 TVs versus a projector with the screen and the projector itself can maybe run you three thousand to three thousand five hundred dollars so there's definitely some value in there but definitely when it comes to contrast when it comes to color accuracy when it comes to resolution tvs are hard to beat but when it comes to size you cannot compete against projectors Projectors lately have been getting a lot better, especially with the new 4K technology as well as laser projectors. 
The other thing to consider is that they've done a tremendous job increasing their contrast ratio. Keep in mind, contrast ratio is your di biggest difference between your blackest blacks and your whitest whites. So projectors have been getting a lot better at getting a much higher contrast ratio. The other thing to consider when it comes to projectors is that they have a pretty long lifespan. So the way it works is that they come with light bulbs and these light bulbs typically have a 5,000 hour life, which is really, really long. And these light bulbs sell for about two to $300. So it's quite inexpensive if your light bulbs on your projectors go out. Well, it would just cost you two to $300 in terms of replacement and then you're good for another 5,000 hours of viewing. So I've been really enjoying Spider-Man Miles Morales on this gaming setup on the PS5. Like I mentioned, the colors are vibrant. The image is super clear. It's running in glorious 60 frames per second as well. I mean, it's just amazing to watch and playing this on a 106 inch screen is awesome so let's switch gears to another game this is ratchet and clank this is the ps4 version but running on the ps5 with upgraded graphics and 60 frames per second so this is what the image would look like in a fully lit room with both windows open so and also viewing this from the side so I just wanted to give you guys an idea. You see how the image is a little bit grayed out? Well, this is, I guess, would be your probable worst case scenario in terms of contrast ratio. Again, all my lights are on, both my windows are open. This would be worst case scenario in terms of image quality. Hats off to Insomniac. In the last week, he released an update for Spider-Man Miles Morales with machine learning. And we got this glorious 60 frames per second upgrade on the Ratchet and Clank. So thank you very much, Insomniac. This is awesome. I was really fortunate with Ratchet and Clank. I didn't have a chance to play this game yet. So I am gonna take full advantage of this new 60 frames per second upgrade with the beautiful 4K graphics. Switching gears, I wanna end this off with a last gaming demo using the Nintendo Wii U and specifically playing Super Mario 3D World on a projector. So you have guys have to understand that this game, Super Mario 3D World, is a native 1080p game, but I just want to show you guys how vibrant and how amazing the colors are. This game is beautiful. The engine that was used for this game just runs amazing. And again, also running at 60 frames per second. If you guys have never played Super Mario 3D World, it's a must. And now there's been a port for the Nintendo Switch so you guys can now enjoy this game. It, actually, it's even bundled with Bowser's Fury. So great game. I think you guys should all play it. Let's watch some gameplay. Now the same would be for any game actually on the Nintendo Wii U. They're all gonna run great on a projector and that includes games like Splatoon, Pikmin 3, Super Smash Bros. Wii U, Super Mario Maker, Paper Mario Color Splash, Mario Kart 8, Yoshi's Woolly World, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, and even Super Mario Galaxy, which is a Wii game, but it runs great on the Wii U because you're able to use the nunchucks. So 
also keep in mind for this specific video I haven't shown you guys gameplay on the PS4 Pro and I haven't shown you gameplay on the Xbox Series S today I just want to concentrate more on the PlayStation 5 since it's the latest next-gen console it's probably the one that's more popular and I thought it was just be interesting to show you guys as well the Nintendo Wii U and keep in mind the Nintendo Wii U is Nintendo's first time they make a HD console that's why I wanted to show that the graphics are great and it runs amazing So that's the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found some value in the video. If you enjoyed the video or found some value, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you really like the content, what I would really really appreciate is a subscription to the channel. It really helps out and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, as always guys, like, subscribe, leave some comments, you know, hit the notification bell, share this video. As always, have yourself a great day, have yourself a great night and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.